In the early 1990s, the Japanese doctor of alternative medicine, Masaru Emoto, came across a passage in a book. Snowflakes are letters from heaven. There is no snowflake that is identical to the others. This gave him the idea to freeze water and try to take pictures of the crystals. His technique was quite simple. A drop of water was placed in a Petri dish and then frozen at a temperature of minus 25 degrees Celsius. To get better results, Dr. Emoto was preparing 50 Petri dishes for each sample of water. After three hours, the dishes were removed from the freezer and placed under the microscope in a room where the temperature was maintained constantly at minus 5 degrees Celsius, and, as the temperature of the ice tip was rising, the crystal was growing and expanding, allowing for Dr. Emoto's team to photograph it. Dr. Emoto noticed that he could not get any beautiful crystals from tap water or rivers and lakes located near big cities. Conversely, he observed beautiful hexagonal crystals, each having its own uniqueness, in water from rivers and lakes kept pristine from human development. In Dr. Emoto's opinion, the absence of the hexagonal crystals is a sign that the life forces in that area have been compromised energetically. Dr. Emoto thought that, since music is sound, and sound is vibration, if he would expose water to music, the crystalline structure would change. It proved to be right. He placed a glass of water in front of two speakers and, after playing different songs, he managed to obtain astonishing photographs, according to the music the water had listened to. While performing these experiments, Dr. Emoto started treating patients using a computerized magnetic resonance analyzer and personalized homeopathic remedies. In cases when the patients were living far away or they were hospitalized, Dr. Emoto asked them for a personal picture in their symptoms, and, according to a documentary film published by the IHM Institute Japan, by 2004, he counseled about 15,000 individuals and cured over 10,000 people. While healing his patients, Dr. Emoto realized that written words retain vibrational information too, so he started to expose water to various words and photos. Inspired by Dr. Emoto's work, a student from an elementary school set up an experiment. She placed cooked rice in two glass jars, and for 30 days, she said thank you to one container, and you fool, to the other. At the end of the month, the rice from the jar that was told thank you developed a rich and pleasant smell, while the rice from the other container turned black, with mold, starting to emit a foul odor. Dr. Emoto repeated the experiment by using three glass beakers instead of two. He said, thank you, to the rice in the first beaker, you are an idiot, to the second, and he completely ignored the third container. After one month, the rice from the first beaker began to ferment, giving a strong, pleasant aroma, the rice from the second beaker turned black, while the rice from the third one started to rot. In Dr. Emoto's opinion, to give your positive or negative attention to something is a way of giving energy. The most damaging form of behavior is withholding your attention. He concluded that this experiment provides an important lesson, especially on how we treat our children. We should take care of them, give them attention, and converse with them. Indifference does the greatest harm. It may not always be easy to do, and, almost always, it takes practice. The rice experiment gained popularity among Dr. Emoto's readers and was successfully repeated by many other people, on different types of rice and even on plants and flowers. However, there were some cases in which, after trying to perform the rice experiment, people got different results. The answer to their failure might be given by the German and the Russian scientists. In Germany, Professor Dr. Bernd Kroplin, from the Institute of Statics and Dynamics of Aerospace Structures at Stuttgart University, performed similar research by placing stones, metals, twigs, flowers, and many other objects in the water. After photographing the crystals, he proved that water has the ability to receive and retain the electromagnetic information to which it was exposed. In an experiment called Lettuce Listening to a Mobile Phone, Dr. Croplin filled up a big pot with tap water from the institute and took pictures of the crystal. It revealed in the middle of the drop a dark spot. 
After coming in contact with the lettuce, the dark spot disappeared, revealing instead a bright center. According to Dr. Croplin, this is a very frequent phenomenon, which occurs after tap water comes in contact with living things. Next, scientists placed another head of lettuce next to a mobile phone, which was turned on for two minutes, and, as expected, the lettuce absorbed the electromagnetic radiation emitted by the phone. During the experiments, Dr. Croplin noticed that drops from the same water revealed different images, depending on the individual who was handling the experiment. Thus, he asked different students to place at the same time drops from the same water on the testing sheet. The result was surprising, each individual produced different images. Dr. Croplin concluded that the experimenter, who is holding the syringe and never came into direct physical contact with the water, is transferring personal information to the water, information that is captured by the water and revealed by the crystal photograph. Similar experiments were performed in Russia at the St. Petersburg Federal University of Informational Technologies, Mechanics, and Optics by Professor Dr. Konstantin Karatkov, author of over 200 papers in leading journals on physics and biology and holder of over 15 patents on biophysics. Professor Karatkov proved that the water's structure is changing when exposed to different words, objects, pictures, colors, music, different types of light, and so on, and he realized that human emotions are the strongest element of influence. He conducted numerous experiments in which a group of people was asked to project onto a flask of water positive emotions, like love, tenderness, and concern, and, after the flask was replaced with another, the same people were asked to project negative emotions, such as fear, aggression, or hatred. After analyzing the samples, Professor Karatkov found that water exhibited changes that were clearly in one direction or the other, according to the emotions projected. Love and positive emotions increased the water's energy levels and stabilized the water, while fear and negative emotions reduced the energy of the water. Dr. Emoto's explanation for the phenomenon was that the purer a person's intentions, thoughts, and feelings are, the more he can change the material reality using water as a medium. His belief was confirmed after a Buddhist monk cleansed the dirty water from the Fujiwara Lake. After about one hour of prayers and incantations, the water started to clear up, and, by the end of the ceremony, even the vegetation from the bottom of the lake became visible. Dr. Emoto extended his research on an even larger scale. In 1997, he sent a letter to 500 of his students from all over Japan, asking them to transmit simultaneously their feelings. At 2 o'clock on February 2, 1997, I will leave a cup containing tap water on the table in my office. Please transmit your feelings to that water at the same time all over Japan. Of course, for this water to become clean water, please send chi and soul of love and the wish that the water should become clean. Thank you very much," wrote Dr. Emoto in his letter. Though almost nobody believed that they can perform a clear change in the condition of the water, the image obtained revealed a beautiful hexagonal-shaped crystal. This made everybody wonder. If remotely sent thoughts could do that to the water from a cup, imagine what your thoughts and feelings can do to you, given that your body is made of about 60 to 90 percent water. In another case, in the early morning of July 25, 1999, Dr. Emoto asked a large crowd of people to project their positive intentions onto the polluted waters of Lake Biwa, the biggest lake in Japan. More than 300 people hold a ceremony that lasted a few days, and, at the end of the ceremony, the local newspapers reported that suddenly there were no longer bad odors emitting from the lake. Many other experiments involving the collective power of prayer are described in Dr. Emoto's books, and I placed some links in the description, so, if you are interested in this topic, you should definitely check them out. After many years of research and experiments, Dr. Emoto concluded that people who have negative thoughts or who are getting angry are polluting their own body and are also more predisposed to various diseases and serious crimes are committed most of all in areas where people curse the most often. Dr. Emoto believed that no religion is better than the other 
or more right than another, and the five major religions can be united in one faith, a religion for the soul, as he called it, but only with the will and the cooperation of mankind. He also came up with a new formula for water, by replacing hydrogen with the word gratitude and oxygen with the word love. In Dr. Emoto's view, we would need two parts of gratitude and one part of love to achieve balance. Although there are many people, especially scientists, who are very skeptics about Dr. Emoto's experiments and who are most certainly unaware of Professor Kroplin's, Professor Karatkov's, and many other scientists' research, including those of Dr. Montagnes, who managed to teleport human DNA and reconstruct it out of pure water. In the next and final part of this series, you will find out what is happening in your body every single time you have a thought or a feeling, and how your actions and emotions are influencing your life, carried by the life-giving substance that we call water. If you liked so far this series of videos about water, in the hope that you will benefit from the information presented, I strongly encourage you to share your recently gained knowledge with your friends and family. And, as always, thanks for watching.